In 1997, Disney released a movie called Rocket Man, not to be confused with the 2019 Elton John musical biopic of the same name. This Rocket Man was about an eccentric named Fred Randall, played by comedian Harlan Williams, who always dreamed of becoming an astronaut, but instead he works for a company that develops software for NASA. Through an insane turn of events, Fred proves himself worthy for the first human mission to Mars, resulting in one of the funniest screwball comedies of the 1990s. Unfortunately, Disney doesn't seem to share the same enthusiasm that I and many others have for this movie. Within the last several years, they've removed their logo from some of the posters, and Rocket Man is not and has never been available to watch on Disney+. Plus. In today's video, we'll discuss why that could be, and so much more. Hello, my little hairball. Disney's Rocket Man. Be careful you don't get sucked out when you watch. Rated PG, now playing. The basic idea for Rocket Man was conceptualized in the summer of 1995, when Craig Mazin and his writing partner Greg Erb went to see the movie Apollo 13. We walked out of there and just started thinking about how much better it would have been if Tom Hanks had been played by an idiot. It wasn't me! Nowadays, Craig is associated with projects like The Last of Us, Chernobyl, and the two Hangover sequels. But during that time, he was working as an advertising copywriter for the Walt Disney Company. He simply passed the idea for Rocket Man along to his boss, and it eventually made its way to Roger Birnbaum at the Disney-owned Caravan Pictures. Even though they had never written a screenplay at that point in time, Craig and Greg were told to write up a draft script for the movie. The script they submitted impressed Caravan Pictures so much that Rocket Man was immediately greenlit. It also helped that films revolving outer space and aliens were really big around that time, so Disney also fast-tracked the film's production to take advantage of that trend. As a longtime fan of this movie, I've always wondered how Harlan Williams managed to land a starring role in it with such limited film and television experience at that point in his career. Nowadays, it seems like Hollywood isn't concerned about casting the actor or actress who best fits a particular role, but rather casting highly recognizable stars whose attachment to a project will hopefully translate to big returns at the box office. But Caravan Pictures head Roger Birnbaum went against that line of thinking completely, stating, For Rocket Man, we didn't need a star. We needed the right person. When production began in September of 1996, Harlan Williams had just two movies on his resume. The comedic submarine film Down Periscope, where he played a sonar technician with bat-like hearing. Watch what you say around him. He hears everything. Excuse me, sir. I don't hear everything. And 1994's Dumb and Dumber. Come on, give me that booze, you little pumpkin pie haircutted freak, come on! Aside from those two films, he did have a few TV credits under his belt. Most notably, a WB series called Simon. One of Jason Bateman's many short-lived sitcoms from the 90s, where Harlan played his, and I quote, simple brother. What are you eating? Gravy! Simon, gravy is not a snack. A snack is crackers, you know? Popcorn, Teddy Grahams, maybe a peach. Hey, maybe I should write this down no, here. you don't have to write it down. Harland worked his way into show business through stand-up comedy, beginning his career out of the same exact comedy club as Jim Carrey, eventually becoming Jim's go-to opener during stand-up tours. By the time that Harland was approached to star in Rocket Man, Disney had already sent quite a few scripts his way, although he never felt like he was quite right for any of those roles, so he chose not to pursue them. One of those scripts was for George of the Jungle, and as much as I love Brendan Fraser, just imagining Harland with a spray tan swinging around like a madman kind of makes me wish he had done that movie. But when the screenplay for Rocketman was sent his way, Harlan loved the fact that it felt like a bit of a throwback to some of the Don Knotts or Jerry Lewis films that he grew up watching, and immediately expressed interest in the movie. After the producers reviewed his audition tapes and attended one of his stand-up shows at the Laugh Factory, they knew that they had found their star. In the film, Fred Randall is sort of the sole funny man surrounded by completely straight-laced characters. KFC. YMCA. GNC and Five. BMW. He's insanely book smart, but very awkward and extremely clumsy. His catchphrase every time he screws up in the movie is. Wasn't me. 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 Truly, it wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Harland alleges that Disney was more than willing to let him perform rewrites on the screenplay. There's a scene where he's placed into an isolation chamber for 24 hours, and in the original screenplay, the isolation chamber door closed, his character yelled, Mommy, and the scene sort of just ended there. In the version that made it into the movie with the help of Harland's rewrites, the doors close and he proceeds to verbally torture the other astronaut in the adjacent isolation chamber. John Jacob! 
Now, in the high G training module scene, he actually does scream mommy, but Harland added on the entire bit where a bolt breaks loose and he flies through the hallways of the space center. He was also allowed to improve certain scenes during production, my favorite of which being the moment where it's announced that he's been chosen for the mission to Mars. The script called for him to just faint out of pure excitement, but Harland improvised and took the scene to another level. The Mars team also includes a character named Wild Bill Overbeck, played by William Sadler, and he was just so perfect as the straight man character alongside Harland. We're the first to talk on Mars. I'd like to be the first guy to die on Mars. The oxygen tube fart scene is just an absolute classic. Oh, oh, it's in my mouth. Hey, he who smelt the Delta. Fred's love interest in the movie is another astronaut on the Mars mission named Julie, who I definitely confused with Nurse Julie from Heavyweights when I was a stupid little kid. It's gonna be a real honor sleeping with you in completely different beds. And there's a chimpanzee named Ulysses that steals every scene and absolutely deserved to win an Academy Award. Rocketman also has a post credit scene with a little Martian stealing Fred's patriotic boxers that he planted as a flag on Mars. And because he's credited as a stuntman in the movie, I'm like 90% sure that Vern Troyer from Austin Powers is inside of that costume. You complete me. But the question is, why has Disney sort of erased their involvement with this film in modern times? If you want to watch Rocketman, it's easy enough to track down. The DVD is out of print, but it's still pretty cheap and commonly found. You can rent or buy it on a few digital storefronts, and there is a Blu-ray version, but it can only be purchased through the Disney Movie Club. But why isn't this movie on Disney Plus? We'll start with theory number one, dated jokes. When Fred is about to use the high G training module, Bill tells him to have fun, to which he responds, Fun is my Chinese neighbor's middle name. When I was a little kid, this joke completely flew over my head. This one is more playful in spirit than anything. It's really not meant to hurt anyone's feelings. Is there okay. win-win? They're win-win. Yeah. That way you win either way. By the way, I know a, a Chinese guy named Win-Win. <laughs> <laughs> well, we're out of time. Uh... This next scene, though, is a bit more dicey. Once the crew makes it into outer space, they hold a broadcast with the President of the United States and the entire world is their audience. Fred tells the President that Earth looks like a ripe blueberry from his point of view, and he feels like he could put the whole world in his hands. Naturally, he breaks into song, eventually inviting the rest of the world to join in with him. The movie cuts to a bunch of stock footage as other countries join in, and it's actually a really nice wholesome moment, but the shit hits the fan when Fred invites the Chinese to sing along with him. And all you Chinese, well, we're out of time. Uh... <laughs> Don't get me wrong, this scene isn't like on the same level as Mickey Rooney's performance in Breakfast at Tiffany's, but I can see why Disney wouldn't want to stream a movie with a scene like this. There's also a segment in a bar where Bill gets Fred absolutely smashed on a drink called the Blast Off. Seeing as The Mighty Ducks is available on Disney+, Plus, and that movie shows Emilio Estevez drinking and driving within the first few minutes, I doubt that Disney has any issues with this scene. Now, onto the next theory, music royalties. With a title like Rocket Man, you'd expect that Elton John's smash hit song Rocket Man would be somewhere in the movie. Well, you would be right, because the end credits feature the song from start to finish. Back in the mid-90s when the movie Rocket Man was produced, Disney would have paid a set fee to Polygram Film and TV licensing in order to use the song in their film. On top of that set one-time fee, Elton John most likely receives a certain percentage of royalty payments every time a copy of Rocket Man is sold or streamed. It's possible that Disney used some algorithm or whatever and figured out that the demand for Rocket Man on Disney Plus wouldn't be high enough to justify kicking back some revenue to Elton John every time someone streams the movie on their platform. I wanted to present that theory because I like to provide multiple perspectives, but I know damn well that this movie isn't on Disney Plus because of those scenes that I went over. I'm not a fan of censoring or modifying films, so I don't believe that one second of footage should be cut from the film. If anything, Disney could just slap one of those stereotype warnings onto the beginning of the movie and call it a day. There's no way in hell that my video will convince the Walt Disney Company to add Rocket Man to their streaming network, but I'll be honest, I just wanted an excuse to talk about this movie. It didn't do well at the box office, but Disney did at least try to promote it. Harland appeared on The Late Show with David Letterman to promote the film, but unfortunately there aren't any images or video from that episode online. He also appeared on Space Ghost Coast to Coast, but of course Space Ghost didn't give him the chance to even name drop the movie. 
About one year after Rocket Man released, Disney aired the movie as part of their Saturday night premiere series. And I'm almost positive that this was the way that I first discovered Rocket Man. I was like six years old at the time, but I distinctly remember being hooked in the second that Fred Randall appeared on screen. To this day, I just can't help but laugh when I see his cartoonish face in this movie. And apparently Disney was impressed with his performance, because Harlan would once again collaborate with them in 1998, starring in a made-for-TV movie called Mr. Headmistress. And on that note, I think that'll do it for today's episode. Let me know if you remember seeing Rocket Man back in the day, or if you plan on checking it out after watching this video. As always, thank you for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.